Hello, welcome to the team. So today we're going to complete the square. So our essential question is, how do you complete the square? Well, remember when you are asked to solve the equation, you are asked to find the solutions for x. Those are called the zeros sometimes, or they're called the x-intercepts. Um, all of those are true, right? They're all interchangeable. So we've gone over three, four ways, excuse me, four ways of solving already. We've graphed, we have square rooted, we have used the quadratic formula, and we have factored. So this is the fifth way completing the square. Well, we know that when we have something that is squared, for example, when we have a plus z and it's been squared, we get a squared plus 2az plus z squared, right? Another way of saying that, if we had x squared plus any number t, we'd get x squared plus 2tx plus t squared. Well, this 2t right here is b, right? It's the value of b. So if we just look at whatever b is, which in this case, our b for this one would be 10. Well, we know that this term b is twice that of the last term, and then we have to square that last term, right? So we just square this guy. So I just need to take b, divide it by 2, and square it, and that completes my square for this one. So our b we just said was 10, so that would be 10 divided by 2, and then we square it. Well, 10 divided by 2 is 5, 5 squared would be 25. So 25 is what goes here. So that means that this came from x plus 5 squared. That's it. All right, let's check our next one now. So for this one, we've got x squared minus 9x. So we want to identify our b, which is negative 9. So b equals negative 9. Now we're going to take whatever this is, divide it by 2, and square it. All right, so negative 9 divided by 2 is negative 4.5. Um, actually, I'm going to leave it as a fraction, and I'm just going to square it as it is. So if I do negative 9 squared, that would get me positive 81, and then 2 squared would be 4, um, because it's not going to come out pretty, and I'd much rather see a fraction like this than something icky and nasty with decimals. Fractions are your friends and their food. So for here, I'm going to write down 81 over 4, all right, or negative 9 over 2 squared. And this has a b of 12, so we do 12 divided by 2, and we square it, because we are doing b divided by 2 squared. Well, 12 divided by 2 we can do, we get a positive 6, um, and then when we square a 6, we end up with 36. So this is going to be 12 divided by 2 squared, which would be 36, or 6 squared, if you want to say it that way. Um, this one down here, we have negative 5. So b divided by 2 squared, that would be negative 5 divided by 2, and then we square it. Well, negative 5 squared is positive 25, and then 2 squared is 4. So I'm just going to put... 5 over 2 squared there. Um, negative times negative is a positive, so you don't have to put the negative in here. You certainly can. It's kind of a nice reminder sometimes. And then if I were to factor this, I would end up with an x minus 5 halves squared. All right? So not super pretty, or x minus 2.5. Not super pretty, but that's okay. It's still correct. Um, with this one, I want you to be careful, okay? Don't make the mistake that a lot of students make because they look at this and they say, oh, well, my b is 1. Well, this isn't in standard form, right? Standard form is ax squared plus bx plus c. This is our a value, right? Which means our b value is 8. So if we do b divided by 2 and we square it, we get... 8 divided by 2 squared, which is 4 squared, which is 16. So this would be a 4 squared that goes in here. So there are four more on this page. Try the next four on your own and see what you get. Pause the video. Pause the video and try as I figure out how to pause it myself. There we go. 
All right, so you should have gotten uh, 7 squared. I like to keep the parentheses around that, all right? And again, this just helps you when we go to factoring, which is what we're going to do next is when we start factoring these. Um, so it's helpful to leave it like this. This is correct as well. It's just helpful to leave it like this for when you factor. Uh, the next one should be a negative 2 squared, which would be positive 4. The next one is a negative 3 halves squared, or 9 fourths. And then the last one is a negative 3 squared, which would be a positive 9. All right, so now that we've taken a look at those, try to turn around my light. Ooh, that's a little better. Okay, that's not too bad. So next thing we want to do is we want to actually solve these by completing the square. That's our goal, is to solve these by completing the square. So we want to, first of all, um, get our a value to be 1, right? We, we also want to move our c value away, right? So this guy already has our c value away, which is perfect, awesome. We like that a lot. Next thing, we've got this 4x squared on here. Well, if we want our a to be 1, how do I get rid of that 4? I have to divide everything by 4, right? That's what I want because I need to make a equal one. So that means we are left with an x squared plus uh, 32 divided by four is eight x. And then negative 68 divided by four is negative 17. All right, step two. We need to write the equation with squares. Ooh, can't spell. There we go. So we need to write with squares. Well, that means we need to look at our b value. Well, we know our b value is 8. So we want to do b divided by 2 squared. Well, that would be 8 divided by 2, which means we have 4 squared. So I need to add 4 squared to both sides, because whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other. So we're going to get x squared plus 8x plus 4 squared minus 17 plus 4 squared. Um, and again, I like to throw on those parentheses just to help my brain realize in case there's that negative, right, the negative is being squared too. So in this case, we don't have negative, piece positive, but it's still helpful nonetheless. Step three, you guys are going to be a whiz at. This is where we factor, all right? We factor the left and we solve the right, all right? So this side we are factoring. Well, here's a nice thing. Because it's squares, I just need to look at my x, and then it's a positive 4. So x plus 4 squared, if I foil that, gets me x squared plus 8x plus 4. If you're a little rusty on your foiling, I recommend you practice a little bit, right? Remember, this just means we have two of them, so this would be x plus 4 times x plus 4. So practice it a little bit if you need to. Hopefully, you're feeling pretty comfortable with that. On the other side, this is where we solve. Well, 4 squared, we know, is 16, right? Well, what's negative 17 plus 16? It's just 1. That's it. It's just 1. And then the last step, step 4, because we are solving for x. Well, now that I have this as a squared, I can solve by square rooting, right? So if I square root x plus 4 squared, I have to square root the 1 as well. Well, wait a second. What's the square root of 1? That's going to be plus or minus 1, and I'm going to get x plus 4. I need to subtract 4 on both sides. Ooh, this guy's a negative 1. Excuse me. I totally almost messed that up really bad because that's a negative 1, which means this guy would be plus or minus i. So x equals negative 4 plus or minus i. Whew. That was super close. Another way of writing that would be um, x equals negative 4 plus i and x equals negative 4 minus i, right? That would be the other way of writing it. I am a human. I understand this. Big ideas is not a human. It does not understand. So you'll want to do it this way. All right, let's do at least one more together. I'm going to skip this one for you guys to try on your own. Okay, so you can pause the video now and try it, or you can wait for us to get done with the next one and then do it. So the next one we're going to do is this one. All right, first thing I need to do is I actually need to distribute because this guy is not set up the, in the most helpful way. So this is x squared 
plus 12x is equal to negative 42. Again, step one was make a equal one. Make a equal one. That means I have to divide everything by six. So x squared plus 2x equals negative seven. Step two was to write the equation with squares. Well, I need to know what my b value is. b I know is 2, so I need to do 2 divided by 2 squared. Well, 2 divided by 2 is really 1, and 1 squared is just 1. So I'm going to rate this as x squared plus 2x plus 1. Whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other. As long as I'm adding the same thing on both sides, it's totally fine. I haven't changed anything, right? My scale stays in balance because I'm adding the same thing on both sides. So now, because this was a 1 squared, this is where we factor the left and we solve on the right. Well, if I factor this, I'm going to get x plus 1, because it's a positive 1 that we squared, and then negative 7 plus 1 is negative 6. Well, hey, this looks really, really, really similar to um, a solve by square root. So x plus 1 squared. We square root it, and we do that on both sides. We get x plus 1 is equal to i plus or minus i root 6. Then I have to subtract 1 on both sides. So we get x equals negative 1 plus or minus i root 6. And that's your answer. Of course, you can split it into the other two, but that's it. So there's one more down here to try, and there's one more on the other page. So pause the video and try those out. Okay, let's go over these. So, um, for the one on the first page, you want to add 6 on both sides, and then in order to make a 0, you need to divide by negative 3. So we get x squared plus 6x equals negative 2. Then we add our squares. Well, b is 6. When we divide 6 by 2, we get 3. So we're going to add 3 squared, and we're going to add 9. Right? And then... When I factor this, because this was a positive 3 squared, we get x plus 3 squared, and then negative 2 plus 9 gives us 7. We square root, so we get the square root of 7, which is just plus or minus 7, and we get x plus 3. When we subtract 3 on both sides, we get negative 3 plus or minus root 7, which is the same thing as negative 3 plus 7, or negative 3 minus 7. Any questions on that? Email me. All right, on the next one down here. Um, again, we had to solve, so we need to get C on the other side. So we subtract 15, and then because we want A to equal 1, we divide everything by 3. So we get x squared plus 4x equals negative 5. Our B value is 4. Well, 4 divided by 2 is 2. 2 squared is 4. So we're doing 2 squared on one side and 4 on the other. Remember, those are the same value. They are both 4. This one is written like this only because it helps us factor easier because then I know I've got x plus 2 squared, right? That's the whole point in completing the square, is that this is a perfect square. That's the whole point. Well, negative 5 plus 4 gets us negative 1. When we square root it, we get plus or minus i. Then we need to subtract 2 from our x plus 2, so we get negative 2 plus or minus i. And hopefully you're feeling pretty good about this. All right, that's all we were doing today. Um, there are some to practice, so I highly encourage you to practice those, all right?